Hey guys, so I'm going to go over the top 10 RxJS operators that I found to be the most useful when using Angular. So RxJS operators are not specific to Angular in any way. Um, they can be used in any JavaScript or TypeScript frameworks. Um, but I'm going to be showing you specifically in Angular how to use them. So for number 10, I'm going to go over of and from. Um, so let's say I have a person object. and I want to turn this into an observable. There's a few ways to do it, but with of, it's really easy to do this. All you need to do is, let me create my variable. You pass in of, and then whatever it is that you want to convert into that observable. Now you want to make sure that you you bring in observable from the RxJS library and of is going to come from there as well as from. The rest of them will most likely come from RxJS slash operators, which looks like this. Um, but I'll show you that as I import them. Um, so again, you just want to make sure you import those. And so what that does is creates a stream for me now. And so now I can say person obs.subscribe and then I'll just log that data. And then you'll see that object here. And I can actually turn all kinds of things into an observable if I just wanted this to be a string. It's my name, I can do that. And you'll see, you can do that. Now let's say um, that I wanted to turn this into a promise, right? So I'm just going to create person promise. It's going to be a promise of type person. And um, so I'll say promise.resolve and then give it the person, right? So it creates that promise for me. So then I take this promise and um, uh, let me bring this down actually. I'm going to pass that into here. Now you'll see that it's going to complain and it's not gonna let me turn that promise into an observable. So for this, you'll have to use from, which again comes from RxJS. And once you do that, you've quickly turned your um, promise into an observable. So those are two big differences between from and of, um, but there are a lot of ways to convert objects and um, strings and whatever into observables, but these are two really quick ways to do it. For number nine, so I'm going to go ahead and create a, um, a new source. Um, so I'll say my name, and then I'll just subscribe to this. Now, let's say that before I subscribe to this, I want to capitalize um, my name. So what I can do is apply an operator to this and you can do that um, one of two places. You can do it at the source, right? So here, if you do it at the source anywhere someone subscribes to this, that operator will already be applied. Whereas if I do it here, it'll only apply to this subscription. Okay. So I'll do pipe here. And then inside of here, I'll pass in map. Now map comes from RxJS operators. So you want that import. And most of the ones that we'll go over after this come from here. Um, but there are some that come from the main um, library. So what map does is basically manipulate the data in any way that you like. So this is going to give you the actual data that comes back from it. So it's going to give me my name. So I'm going to take my name and say to uppercase. Okay. And that's it. Now I've mapped it. So you'll see here in the out, the stream output, it has an uppercase. So like I was saying before, if I were to pipe this here, then anywhere that you subscribe to this source, you'll always have that mapped. So sometimes it just depends on your situation, whether you always want it to be mapped or if you want to do it on a situational basis. And so now for tap, what tap does is, let me go ahead and import that. Tap basically is whenever you don't want to actually touch the data 
you don't want to, you don't want to change it at all. So to give you an example, um, you can do logging here, right? Let's say you want to log the data, but you don't want to affect it in any way. You would use tap for that, okay? Or let's say you wanted to send a signal to um, a service or something, but you don't want to actually manipulate the data. You would use something like tap for that. Um, basically what tap does is it doesn't change the data in any way, no matter what you do inside of this uh, function. So you see here, I have name to uppercase, which I had from the map, but now you'll see it actually doesn't do the uppercasing. And so that's, that's an example of when you would want to use tap. Number eight is share. So let's take a quick look at this example. I have a request here, which sends out a request, a get request, to this API to get a bunch of posts. So what I do is I save that to a constant, and then I set a loading spinner so that there'd be a, no, a loading icon on the page. So what this does is it takes in an observable, and so what I do is I set this loading variable to true. That'll let my view know when to display the loading icon. And then I subscribe to that observable so that I know when it's done getting the post from the um, API. Once it's done, I set loading to false. So that's all that function does. It just sets the loading spinner. So after I set that loading spinner, I take the request, I subscribe, and then I do what I needed to do, which was just print the data. So this looks pretty standard. Um, and you'll see, um, and actually what I'll do is I will log the data here. And you'll see that I get a response back and I get all of my posts. Um, something that's really easy to miss in Angular is if you go over to the network tab, you'll see that I actually made two requests to this API, right? I had two get requests here. You can ignore these two right here. This just comes from uh, cross origin. So what's happening here is inside of this function, I subscribe to that observable and then I subscribe to it again here. So what that's going to do is emit two separate streams and it's going to make that request twice. Sometimes you may want this behavior, but with HTTP requests, you might not want that. So, an easy way to fix that is to add a pipe share. Once you add that to the main source, then no matter how many times you subscribe, it will always just give you that one original source. So that looks like this, just pipe and then share. And that comes from the RxJS operators as well. So now that I've done that, you'll see um, this time I only make the one request, right? Again, this one is just um, something to do with cross-origin, um, but you'll see now I'm getting just that one request. Number seven is switch map. So what switch map does is it basically cancels from one observable and switches to another, okay? And it sends a value from the first observable to the second one. So I have here two requests. I have an API request to get a bunch of posts and I have another one to get a bunch of comments. So let's say I want to subscribe to the posts, get those, and then I want to cancel that observable, switch to comments, and then get those. So this is what that would look like. So I'm going to create a combined observable, and um, I'll say post obs that pipe, and then switch map, which comes from the RxJS operators. So this is gonna give you the value from the first observable, the one that you're um, piping from. So this is gonna give me posts. And then I'm gonna, then what you need to do is return another observable, okay? So since I have this other one, that's what I'm gonna return. I'm gonna return the comments observable, okay? So, this overall observable is a comments observable, right? Because basically what it did was it switched from post to comments. So it's no longer a post. You can see that when I hover over here, TSLint tells me it's observable of type comments, which is the second one. 
Now I have access to both values. I have the posts and I have the comments. So I'm going to take a quick look at what's coming from here. So I'm going to pipe this observable as well. And then I'm going to do tap like we did before. And this will give me comments. So I'll say console log comments. And then post. And then I will just subscribe here. And then you see I get those comments and then I get the post. So the, the big thing with switch map is the canceling effect because basically what it does is it goes out, gets this, cancels that one, and then switches to another observable. So this, is, this can be useful in a lot of situations, um, but I'm just kind of give you, giving you an example. Um, I'm not saying you, you would do it this way for, the, for this specific um, type of situation, but I'm just giving you an example of how switch map works. So for number six, we have debounce time. So right now I have this search lookup every time I type a word it tries to match it um, based on these search results. Now these search results that you see are all posts coming from an API. Um, I'm just displaying their title and so I'm just searching by title here. And so the way this works is I have an input which is binded to this search function. Now this search function takes in the search term as an observable stream, okay? And so what I do is I return that stream back, but I, I use the operator switch map to return another observable, which is my post API request. So this API request goes and fetches all the posts and then it compares it to the search term, which I, I get here from the switch map. And I return all the post titles that match that search term. Okay, so that's what you see here. Now, one thing I want to show you, I'm going to erase this and I'm going to go over to my network tab. Now, every time I type in a letter, this actually makes a server request. So as I'm searching here, you'll see that it makes a bunch of server requests over and over again every time I search, right? Well, this isn't very efficient. So one way to fix this is to use debounce time. Now, what debounce time is, is it basically waits a certain amount of time before performing this search, right? Before performing a, the, be, before emitting the source. So what I would do here is I would just say debounce time. And then I just provide a time that I wanna wait. So I'll do maybe 500 milliseconds, okay? And so now watch what happens. So I'm gonna type in a word here and you'll see that it doesn't do a server call yet. And then as soon as I start, start, stop typing after 500 milliseconds, it goes and sends that request, right? So that's one way to prevent the whole searching, um, you know, right away on every keystroke. You give the user a little bit of time to type in the search term. So for number five, we have distinct until change. Now back over in the search, um, you see I have a search term here. Now watch what happens when I delete the T and type it again. It hits the server. And then if I keep doing that, it makes server call over and over again, even though I'm searching with the same exact value. In some cases, you might not want to do this. So what you can do is use distinct until changed. So right below here, I'll add distinct until changed. And so now it's not even going to emit anything if I haven't changed what I searched with. So let me show you how this works. So I'm gonna go ahead and search that same word again, clear this out. I'm gonna delete the T, type it in. So there's our first search. And notice every time I do it again, it doesn't repeat over and over again, right? So it's going to wait until I've actually changed my search term before searching again. So now if I type another letter, then it goes and performs the search again, right? So that's just another way to go ahead and improve your um, search efficiency. For number four, we have take, and there's different variations of this. I'll go ahead and show you all of them. Um, they're pretty easy to use. 
So um, right here, my ng on init. I'm going to go ahead and create a listener from the document click. And then I will subscribe to this. Okay, and then you'll just see this here. Every time I click, you get that listener subscribe there. Now let's say that I only want to get the first click, right? Um, well, there's a bunch of different ways to do this, but you can use take for that, right? So I can say take um, one, right? And so that'll just take in the the first click and then it won't do it again. You could use first, which is a whole different operator, but that will basically do the exact same thing. Now let's say I have um, a counter here of zero, and every time I get a click here, I go ahead and increment that. And so then I wanna stop when the counter reaches three, right? So I can say take, um, take while, and then I can say um, counter, is less than three. And actually, let me go ahead and log that counter here. Okay, so you'll see the one. And then as soon as it gets to the third click, then it stops working. All right, so that's take while. Um, then you have take last. So let me show you what this looks like. Go ahead and change this to a array stream. So I'll just do something like this. Now let's say that I only want the last value. That's the only thing that I'm interested in. And I can just say take last. Oops. Then you just tell it how many values you want. So let's say I want the last two. So I should get just three and four. So let me actually log the value here to see what I get. And you see the, the two values there, the three and the four. Okay, and then last you have take until, which basically takes in a um, an observable. And so let me show you how this works. So I'm gonna create a function here called stop. And I'm gonna create a variable up here um, called, um, I'll just call it on stop, which is gonna be a new subject of type void. All right, and subject comes from RxJS, so don't forget to import that. And so what I can do now is inside of this pipe, I can say take until this dot on stop. So basically what will happen is this will be subscribed until um, this emits a, a signal out, right? So I'm going to change this back to the document listener and show you how this works. So that'll keep emitting. Um, and then this, in this stop function, what I'll do is I'll say this dot on stop dot next which will cause it to emit and send a signal to this, which will stop it. And then afterwards I can go ahead and just destroy my um, on stop subject here. So let me show you how this works. All right, so as I click here, you see that I have the listener running and then as soon as I press this stop button, you'll see that it no longer emits. So that's really useful whenever you want to use another observable to notify subscription when to stop. Um, in Angular, oftentimes this is really useful whenever you wanna stay subscribed to something until the component is destroyed, then you can use a subject to notify your subscription to end.
Number three, we have merge map and flat map. So I have these two observables. One gives me a color and one gives me a driver. Now I take this color and this driver and make a car out of them, a car observable. So again, this is a color observable and observable of type driver. I'm going to create my new observable called car obs. It's going to be observable of type car. And so what I'll do is what, what I'm doing here is I'm going to merge these two observables into one. So I'll take the first one called car color observable and I'm going to pass in the pipe and I'm going to use that merge map. So merge map is going to give me the value of this first observable, which is going to be the color. So I'm going to pass that to the second observable. So what I'll do here is return the second observable. Now, I'll, now I have to transform this into a car. So what I'll do is I'll pass in another pipe to this and use what we used earlier, which was the map. So map is going to give me the value of the second observable which is the driver. So now I have the color and I have the driver. So now I go, go ahead and create my car. And so my driver is going to be the driver, which I get from here. And then the color, which I get from the first observable. And then finally I return that car. Let me fix this here. All right, so again, what I'm doing here is I'm just combining these two observables into one. And so now I can go ahead and subscribe to that. And let me just make sure that I get my combined value. And then you'll see there I have a combined object, color, and a driver. Number two is concat. So back again, I have my two observables, the car and the driver. Now what I can do is I can say um, combined obs, and then I pass in concat. Now concat comes from RxJS, not RxJS slash operators. There's two concats. Um, so if you use the one that's like this, pipe concat, then that comes from RxJS operators. But this is a static version, so you use it like this. Basically, all you do now is you just pass in all the observables that you want to concatenate together. But what you need to keep in mind is that these are going to emit in order. So to give you an example, I'm going to subscribe here. And so basically what's going to happen is this is going to emit twice. It's going to first emit the color and then the driver. So you see when I hover over data, it tells me that the data type is color or driver. So this is going to emit twice rather than one combined. So that's how it's different than merge map. So to give you an visual what that looks like, you'll see here it emit color and then it emit the name. Now one thing to note is that this is always going to be in order of how I concatenate it. So if this request took a long time, it doesn't matter. It's still going to emit first before the driver. Okay, so that's a key feature of concat. And then number one is fork join. So let's say that I have two observables, or let's say I have even more than that. Let's say I have five, and I and I don't care about any individual one, but I just want to wait till they're all done and then get all the values at once, right? So this is similar to um, JavaScript's promise dot all right you give it an array of promises and then you just wait till they're all done before you take action this is the same thing so the way this works is you would say combined fork join and then you pass in the observables that you want to um, put together and so this is going to emit in an array fashion right so basically for all the observables that I give it, it's going to finish all of them and then it's going to emit all the values in an array. Okay. So let me show you what that looks like. So rather than emitting for each one, it'll emit one time, but it'll give me an array. And you'll see when I hover over data here, it gives me an array of posts and comments. 
And you'll see now I get one stream, but it's an array of posts and comments.